Today was a great range day. Every single day. I'm on a mission, a mission to prove that if you practice once a week and you play once a week, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are relegated to playing average or below average golf, that by dedicating yourself to a simple approach and working on your short game and your putting, that you can develop higher level golf and easily get to a low single digit handicap. Okay, so here's basically what I'm working on. You all saw my struggles if you've been watching the last couple of videos. I kind of lost my way. My ball striking really just degraded. My stillness was completely gone. Uh, you can't lose your swing, but you can certainly turn the lights off in a room and make it harder to find. I, I kind of came to this point where I said, okay, let's go back to the ultimate goal. What is the ultimate goal we're trying to achieve here? And for me, it's really simple. I need to be able to strike the ball consistently and hit more fairways and more greens. I can't ask for my full swing to give me scratch golf. That's something I have to ask of my complete self. I can't ask my full swing to make sure that I get pars and birdies. Again, that's something I have to ask of my complete game. But what can I ask for out of my full swing? Don't get me into trouble off the tee. Give me some reliable distance. And then when it comes to hitting greens, I'd like to hit more greens. I'm only hitting about three to four greens around. You just can't make good scores when you're scrambling all day. I mean, nobody is going to have 13 greens missed and then scramble 100% of the time and make them all pars. It's just not gonna happen. You're gonna make bogey sometimes. You're gonna make double bogey sometimes if you keep missing fairways and missing greens. So again, I say, let's go back to the beginning. What is it that I wanna accomplish? And what I wanna accomplish is really simple a consistent, somewhat powerful ball flight that I can rely on. Okay, I don't want to make the mistake of trying to say, I got it. Because the fact of the matter is, is that you will never have it. It's not a, it's not a bird that you can catch or a stone that you can pluck out of the river. It's more like a river flowing. The water that's in front of you is not the water that was there yesterday. It may look a lot like the same thing, but it's not the same water as it was yesterday. What I've been working on lately is internal focus versus external focus. There's lots of videos on this. There's lots of stuff you can Google. Um, I've known about this for quite some time. I strayed from it and now I'm trying to come back to it because I feel it has so much value and it can really help me with the struggles that I'm going through currently.
So, here's what I'm trying to do. Instead of a lower body stillness, such as Jim has, where his lower body just doesn't move all the way on his back swing and it just bumps kind of forward on his, his through swing, instead of trying to, to mimic and imitate what he's doing and making myself a carbon copy of him, which is an unattainable goal, I need to simply look at the principles that he's given me and try and apply them to myself rather than try and copy his swing. So number one, instead of trying to keep my lower body perfectly still, which I'm having such a hard time with, I focus more on my center. My center, my head, my core stillness. If my legs move a little bit, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. I was focusing too much on my legs and too much on my mechanics. So now I try and focus more on keeping my head kind of in the same spot for it to be still back and through. The next thing I'm doing is I'm applying external focus rather than the internal focus of mechanics. I got lost in mechanics, even though I know mechanics are not the way to good ball striking. And I started being too internally focused. So now I'm trying to focus externally. Now there's two kinds of external focus from what I can understand. Number one is the external which is close to you. The club, the ball, the ground, everything that's in proximity to you. And then there's distance external focus. The target, a leaf on a tree, the center of the green, a bunker. Those are long distance external focuses. If I focus on that, then my subconscious takes over and controls my body's movements and the head of this club, the weight of the head of this club will make my body move and react in the way that it's supposed to. The results have been phenomenal. Uh, great distance, great power, really good consistency. And I find that I can put the ball back in my stance, I can put it forward, I can put it in the middle, I can cut it a little bit, I can draw it a little bit, I can hit it straight. Manipulating ball flight is not that difficult. But I'm picking that spot out and that is now my external focus at a distance. So when I set up, I'm gonna set up to that spot. And I think I'm gonna hit, try and hit a draw because that's my stop shot. So then once I set up over the ball, now it's time to apply Jim's setup. Weight on the front foot, pivoted so that my left side becomes more dominant, kind of takes over, shoulders a little closer to the target. And I'm just gonna try and remain where my head is and be relaxed, try and keep myself centered. During the swing, all I'm thinking about is feeling the weight of that club head, pass back, and then pass right underneath the ball, cutting the tee, and just sending it down to target. Let's see how that works. That's what I'm talking about. Man, it is humid. So this driving range is closing down at the beginning of October. There's not a lot of driving ranges around unless you go to a golf course. Uh, so I'm gonna have to end up finding a new spot to practice. I learned a lot. I feel like I'm moving into another another vein of understanding with stillness.